Okay, we're we're here. Uh, sorry, we're late. Um, uh, it was, uh, of course, uh, Jesse's fault, not mine. Always, always. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, listen. Today's episode is going to be called "What You Did on the Pole." <laughs> yes. <sighs> so. <laughs> David is so happy. When I do these polls, right, I I come up, you know, with ideas that I think are going to be good ideas. And then, you know, based on, you know, whatever the system is for the poll in question, I was like, well, I guess I should probably do this. In this case, I was like, I had uh, th four options, right? Um, and then three of those options, so four options that only use digits, and then three options that use the same digits, but also the two ears. And so it gave you a two base bump, right? So it was base eight, but also base 10 if you had the two ears. Um, then there was uh, base eight, uh, let's see, what was it? Base um, 16 and 18, right? Mm -hmm. And then- We had base eight, 10, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 30. That's right, 20. Okay, so I got okay. to 20. And I was like, well, I guess technically with that base 20 system I came up with, you could include the two ears and that would, that would inc increase it by not just two, but 10, because each of the non-dominant digits counts as an entire tens row. And so I thought, well, just to be fair, I will include base 30 because nobody will vote for it. <laughs> but it <laughs> won. <laughs> Do you want me to read the final numbers for how badly it won? Please do. Or how well? Please um, do. I will, I will say the very bottom, uh, nobody wanted base 14 or 16, or they, they switched their votes. Um, only one person voted for base 10, another one for base 20. So those were not popular. By the way, let, got, let me just uh -huh. make a note about that base 14. I, w I was kind of sad that nobody voted for it. That was the, the base system that I came up with for Erathian. That was how I got base 18. Because ah. if you have your hands like this, right? And you count like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I thought that was super clever. And so it came up with a really weird base, base 18, but it made sense based on humanoid hands. Anyway, I did that for rabbits, but of course, since there was no extra digit, that was base uh, 14 or 16? 16. 16. No, 14. 14. Yeah. 14, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, proceed. But yeah, unfortunately. Um, four votes went to base 8, so that was only slightly more popular. And then base 18, which was my personal favorite, Mine too. Um, had 14 votes. But base 30 had 22 votes. So not even like margin of error it is it is our counting system yeah you know it's like when i put out that post two days ago that said hey there's still 48 hours to vote and there's two horses in this race you might want to switch your vote i was hoping that everybody would just flood to base 18 since base 30 was winning by one vote at that time you shouldn't have said anything i should not because have said then anything. if we had just gotten one more base 18 vote you would have been at least tied and yeah then we could have, sorry, I got to move my laptop again. I've got to figure out a way to get comfortable with the laptop. We're good. Coming from a different location every week now. It's all good. Anyway, as a contingency plan, <laughs> I, um, I, oh, by the way, the way base uh, 30 works is like this. Again, you have to assume four fingers here, right? So it's uh, one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 ear, and then 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, the, se the second ear. That's how you get base 30. Um, it was kind of a wacky idea. I thought, eh. I, I, I used it to get to base 20. That was all. The wackier, the better. Yeah, I just... I didn't imagine the ear thing. Ah. <laughs> oh, great. I only voted for base 30 instead of base 14 because of David's post. 
And I also want to say, and I, we had spoken about this yesterday, but when you posted about, hey, switch your vote because, you know, these are losing anyway. So if you want your vote to count, like switch it to something else. And you were so diplomatic toward um, Base 30 at that point because you were like, hey, it's great. Bunnies come in big numbers. It makes sense. And I was like, really? You need to just like not say those things, David. <laughs> But I want to be fair. I know. I know. <laughs> anyway, so earlier as a contingency plan, I was trying to work up a way to write a base 30 system, and I came up with something. And then today I was trying to write it out uh, bigger. And then, um, first of all, it took extra time. And then second, I realized I made a mistake. Uh, and so then I like, you know, and then Jesse was calling because it was literally three minutes to air. And so... <laughs> Yeah. It's not good. It's good. Um, and I think you had your notifications off. She wasn't answering. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> Sir Hagfish did ask if, if we could, for practice, put my social security number into base 30. Yeah, here, I've got the numbers for you, so just call it out, okay? Um, <laughs> but let me try and show you what I did. I mean, I'll take a picture of this later. Um, let me, I'll make sure. Okay, so I, so I made two mistakes. And uh, you'll you'll spot the first one fairly easily, um, because um, I miss I skipped a row I skipped a modifier, but essentially you're having rows of four here, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the next page I did uh, the one with the four modifier, um, and I'll show you that. Um, but what I realized is that by the time you get to 30, there's actually nothing for 29. Because if you have rows of 4, you get, you know, uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 26, and then 30. That should work, shouldn't it? Ish. The way you just said it, but four, 30 is not divisible by 4. It would be 28 and then 32. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. 28. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, did I, I don't, what did I do? I don't know where it went wrong while you were counting because it sounded right in my head <laughs> as you were doing it, but it's so not right. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to have to watch the replay on that. So yeah, um, uh, 20, 24, 28, 30. And so obviously um, the uh, 30 is going to be rendered with, you know, the you can see it down there, just a, a 1 plus R0 character. Um, but 29 doesn't have a number for it. So, uh, anyway, I came up with two potential forms for 29. Uh, one of them is just a square. The other one is uh, essentially rabbit ears. Letting you know that, hey, we just got our rabbit ears left, uh, as a oh little my kludge. Gosh. Oh my gosh, David. Those two <laughs> forms of 29, put them together and you have the outside of our LST logo. <laughs> complete with rabbit ears oh, that, my goodness. that is the best a nod to our logo which is a tv with rabbit ears but i mean so very appropriate uh, the, um, uh eternal spotted the mistake i did 24 plus 4 is 26 thank you <laughs> eternal <laughs> it's a new math we're trying out um, it's it's the new know. two plus two is five <laughs> <laughs> let us let us know if you appreciate the uh, the switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. That's good. That's good. Yeah, um, I I was thinking of that too. Jason Reed points out how nine in uh, Roman numerals is one before the X. I believe that was a later uh, convention, wasn't it? Didn't it? Didn't nine used to be V with four ones? I actually think it did used to be but i may be misremembering that because i also nodded when you said 24 26 for adding four so i <laughs> could be wrong mm. but i do think it used to be v i i i, I. yeah 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 magister cause saying that it came much later but yeah okay, so anyway you get some agreement there perfect yeah i i kind of like the rabbit ears Anyway, so I'll make it work on the writing system, but of course the, the, the written part of it, it's not necessarily going to coincide with the spoken part of it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I really loved the idea that somebody in our subreddit came up with for 30 being based off of the word for litter. And then, oh, and then like numbers up to 30, up to a certain point, we can decide when could be, you know, this before the litter or, or before we have a litter or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, I don't think that we should necessarily get to coming up with words for the number system just yet um, till we have more grammar and verbiage to play with. Um, right. We'll get there, but you know, at least we have the numerals because you know I need to put them in the font. This is going to be very difficult to use. This font is going to be very difficult to use. <laughs> wow, it'll be fun. Anyway, all right. So with that out of the way. I guess we're, we're back to grammar, right? Always. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. All right. So we did this. We figured out our reduplication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did. I'm sorry. I'm looking at Go ahead. Juniper has said that we accidentally created a base 35. And so I've been like in my head recounting them. One, two, three, four, five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I, I think we're good, though. I, I was just re-verifying for the 80th time that that is, <laughs> is correct, that it's a 30, base 30 system. Okay, sorry. That's why I was, if I was looking very confused at the screen, I was counting in my head to make sure that it was truly base 30. Mm. Um, but, yeah. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, now I'm wondering about it as well. But, of course, remember that the written system is not going to be the same as the spoken system. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, little Roman is snoring over there. Mm -hmm. This is his sleeping time. I wish I could coax him over. <sighs> Maybe. All right. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so we, we finished off by writing some sentences. And then we made this note which we should probably note somewhere. Uh, so, angle and flex for aspect right, right. So this is actually what would come next. Um, Jesse the ghost. <laughs> and I'm trying to find where that was. I'm like, I remember we made a note. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Now, now I've scrolled to the appropriate place in, in the document. So what we need is a new paragraph that doesn't start with a dot. How do you do that? I usually just copy and paste from somewhere else where I did that, but I don't think I have it here. We want a new indented paragraph that doesn't have a dot in front of it. Otherwise known as a bullet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Except a bullet list? I do not I try see to be any less violent. indented text without the bullet. That's interesting. There we go. And just make did it you work. Find it? Well, we'll make it work. Um, okay. Wait, oh wait, no wait, I think I know how to do it. Oh wait, but we're not on adverbs, we're over here. Yules, yules. Okay, wait, here we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. You gotta pull my video over so I can see where you are in the document as you're jumping around. <laughs> okay. But maybe let's put some extra space here for ease of reading. That's always nice. Yeah. Okay. All right, the two main forms of the verb are the plain perfective and reduplicated or imperfective. Oh, side note, I think I understand the confusion. Yes. Um, there's, there's only four digits, um, not five digits. If the rabbits had five digits, it would be a base 35 system. Oh. But it's only four digits, and so as they're doing it, one, two, three, four, five would be, yeah. on the other hand, one, two, three, four, ten, one, two, three, four, fifteen, twenty, and then twenty-five, thirty. So, yeah. but they're only doing it with the four digits. Yeah, this was a decision during our last video where we, uh, with the help of Bibliridian, we, we elected to not have the do claw develop into a fully functional digit. 
Right. Instead, it was going to go away, and one of the remaining four digits was going to curve around and become more thumb-like. In fact, then it would look a little bit more like my thumbs, which are actually index fingers. They're copies of my index finger that uh, a surgeon um, managed to turn into uh, somewhat usable thumbs. Only... Which still blows my mind that anyone was able to do that and figure out, especially since we're, you know, getting older. Way back in the day, someone was able to do that. You ready to have your mind blown even more? So that surgery was probably like in 82, 83 or something, right? Okay. My mother had the same surgery in like 62, 63. Really? Yeah. Now mine are better, um, but you know, not like a ton better. Do you show off? Like, hey, look what I can do? <laughs> no. You know, <laughs> the one thing that has uh, changed as I've grown older is that it's, um, they do get fatigued and, and pained uh, somewhat easily if I hold things. Like a full water bottle, like just, if I were just holding this like this, it, my thumb would start to hurt after a little bit. Kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't use manual can openers, it's garbage things. Um, I ended up having to do it like this. And you know the doors I hate the most? Oh my God, they are all over Berkeley. Um, they have a, just a, a handle that you grip like this. Then they have something up here that you're supposed to push with your thumb. It's like, oh, is that a joke? You, the, the kind where it's like a, like the, the handle that comes out and you grip it and push? It, it's, it, not, no, not those. It's the, it, they have, it has a vertical slot and you are literally supposed to move it this way. Move it? Yeah, like. That sounds horrible. It's awful. I can't do it. I have to use two hands. And then if I'm holding stuff, it's like I have to put something down. Um, right. Yeah. And it ticked me off when they made iPhones bigger. And they're all like, I, ugh. It's like. Because it's harder. You can't. I can't get to the top of the screen. It's so ridiculous. I was like, and we were on this trend, remember, with uh, pre-smartphones where cell phones mm -hmm. were getting smaller and smaller and smaller uh -huh. and smaller. And that was a good thing. Now they're getting bigger? Who thought that was a good idea? <laughs> Do you want the phone like in Zoolander? Yes. The little. <laughs> wow, do people not get that joke anymore? The Zoolander one? <laughs> yeah, because that was the whole point how phones were getting smaller, but now they're not. Right. So like I guess yeah, they probably wouldn't understand why we would have wanted a phone that small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, okay, what am I doing? Okay, the Timian Wars, the verb of the plain or perfective and reduplicated or in perfect forms. Um, and there is a distinction in Angala between, what do we want to call this? Uh, state of and dynamic? Um, this is, oh, oh, for this, yes. Let's, let's, let's go with that for the time being, between dynamic and state of verbs. Uh, for, di uh, for dynamic verbs, um, the distinction between plain and reduplicated is a distinction between uh, perfective and imperfective. Um, for stative verbs, on the other hand, the distinction uh, is between, um, what do we call this, uh, status versus state which just makes it even more confusing. State of, status, state. It really, that sentence does not make sense anymore, I don't think. I'll, I think it says the same thing three times. I'll throw in a little <laughs> example. But um, you know the other thing I hate, and I still hate it, and I hate it even as I'm typing this? Who thought it was a good idea to come up with verb forms called perfect and imperfect, and then verb forms mm -hmm. called perfective and imperfective? I really would like to, like, kind of throw a pen at somebody, I think. Yeah, and then I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not super violent, but I think I'd throw a pen at whoever decided to, to do that. And then there's this other one hanging around called anterior, where it's like the perfect, what we call the perfect tense in English is really the anterior, and I still have no idea how that relates to perfective. It's ridiculous. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Anyway, uh, and I don't dispute, I, I, I want to mention, I don't dispute that these are different, like actual grammatical states. I dispute the nomenclature, which I think okay. is awful. Just, oh my gosh, can you say how you say that word again? 
nomenclature. I love it. Ooh, how are you saying it? Um, well, the way that I thought it was supposed to be said, nomenclature. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm looking it up in a dictionary. Please do. <laughs> I'm curious. I don't know. That's just what oh, I did. Oh, the dictionary agrees with me. Okay. Dang. Nomenclature. <laughs> Nomen. Not nomen. Nomenclature. But it's like uh, Tzvi, the, the stress. Tzvi Khalid Maya says nomenclature. <laughs> I finally, yes, Jason, I finally went around. <laughs> normally, normally I'm horribly wrong, but this time it's fast. <laughs> Nah, man, nature. You know what it oh. reminds me of, of all things? A uh, cat on a hot tin roof. Yeah. Where did that come from? The the, the movie version. Yeah. He, I've he, never seen it. He keeps, the, guy, the, the older guy keeps going around and saying, Mendacity! Everywhere I see mendacity! <laughs> I feel like, it's a, it was like a big deal in the in the movie, him and mendacity. Anyway, nah, man, <laughs> <laughs> It sounds better. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like uh, it sounds like a, a euphemism, you know, for the for some sort of governing body. Now you go up there and you tell the nomenclature that we do not accept their authority. So on. <laughs> Although um, it, Eternals Dictionary has your pronunciation listed as well, Ooh. nomenclature. Ooh. <laughs> Without an R at the end, so it's an. So that must be a British or some other artist. Um, nomenclature. <laughs> uh, nomenclature. Oh, that's nice. You that's say nice. nomenclature and I say nomenclature. Nomenclature. <laughs> nomenclature. <laughs> I'm basically, from the number of pronunciations I've seen now float by in the chat, I'm thinking that just as long as you get the N, the M, the K, the L, and a CH, we're good. <laughs> it's just whatever happens <laughs> after that. <laughs> Newman Cloy Shire. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Newman Cloy Shire. All right. Oh, man. Okay, Carson sorry. I totally got off there. You were you were railing on the nomenclature. Yes. Or the nomenclature <laughs> um, of the verbs, and I agree. It's really kind of horrifying the, mm -hmm. the amount of vocabulary that overlaps and then just really doesn't even make sense. Um Thank but you. I also feel that way about phonological rules that could be written in everyday English. We're going to run out of typewriter ink with your method. <laughs> <laughs> ribbons are going to run dry. <laughs> you couldn't find half your symbols on a typewriter. And we're going to have to go to the five and dime <laughs> to get another typewriter ribbon. Oh, man. Okay, okay. Plus, there's less to white out when you make a mistake. <laughs> remember white out? I do remember. Right. And remember this? Pulling over and pulling the thing back. <laughs> and trying to get it just perfect. Yeah. And yeah. there was there was also that um, that tape that you could lay down that wasn't quite white out, but it would, like, yeah. take it away, and then you have to take the tape off. But yeah. it was, like... Oh, oh that my was goodness! Good times. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so we'll call this dynamic, um, uh, dynamic plane, uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, there was something. I, there was something really important. Oh gosh, just so important that I wanted to say. Would have blown everybody away. And now I'm waiting. And now there's like anticipation, which means mm -hmm. it better be good when you do think of it. I know, it was so good. It had something to do with typewriters, I think. Um, okay, so it was good. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. And Jesse Ime. All right, the rabbit twitched its ears. Not the tabbit. Oh, gosh. We have a grabbit, now we have a tabbit. <laughs> the grabbits and the tabbits. It could be family lines. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Um, the Applesauce Project says that Whiteout was invented by Mike Nesmith of the monkey's mother. What? Really? 
Okay. So Mike's mom, Mike Nesmit of the Monkees. That's one heck of a possessive noun phrase there. Oh my gosh. I love it. Okay, but yeah, it's the mother of Mike Nesmith, who's from the Monkees. Unbelievable. You know why I know Mike Nesmith's name? Because of the joke on The Simpsons where people are making fun of Marge's uh, monkey's lunchbox. And the last thing people, <laughs> the girl says to her is, that's not even Michael Nesmith's real hat. Dark Force said we may have just figured out the male and female. A grabbit's a male and a tabbit's a female. (laughs) Grabbits and tabbits, lend (laughs) me your ears. (laughs) Okay, Okay, so So now we're actually looking at the examples. They are typed here. Yeah, and so they. Wonderful. That was now duplicated from over there, so we don't need it anymore. And the bunch of berries there. Okay, so now we're back to the question I still don't have an answer to. Is this all we want to do with the form of the verb? Less uh, agreement. (laughs) I'm staring. (laughs) Because part of me is like, yes. And another part of me is like, but... (laughs) So let's... um, Let's 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 do a little thought experiment here, all right? Okay. So let's say that we had um, these forms here. I like it bold and italic. Chessy versus Chessy, right? Um, if we have agreement, the very smallest that it could be is a single letter, mm-hmm. right? And more, it's more likely that it's going to end up being something like a full syllable. So, which is going to lead to uh, tetrasyllabic uh, verbs. Now, we could. So. I was planning of, of using the coincidence of our coda N and S's as agreement, but we could use those as verbal forms themselves and then have the agreement come afterwards and we'd still be at a max tetrasyllabic syllable for a base but disyllabic verb. So then you have to think, if we do mark more, is it something where it, we would want it to be potentially um, like a function word, where it's an actual separate word yeah. that comes from something? Yeah. And then where would it be? Where would it be? Let me... Um, I'm going to show you my Kleenex box real quick and pull up my handy trusty copy of the world lexicon of grammaticalization oh my gosh what okay show that show that book to the world and i need to find that book okay thank you i get 590 dollars every time i show this book on youtube i love it you need to get in the game jesse i really do you know what oh wait 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 (laughs) i forgot Oh my gosh, with everything going on right before this, yeah, I totally forgot that I was going to print out the logo of the ice cream company I've decided I'm going to sponsor on here since you have Copico. I was like, <sighs> I need something. And I want to support Nada Moo. Oh, that's right. Nada Moo. Yes, dairy-free ice cream, Austin, Texas company, and it is delicious. Um, and it's very exciting because with all the food allergies and my house uh, we can't have regular ice cream and can't have any of the cashew milk or anything like that because also no tree nuts and not a move fits the bill it's Mm -hmm. so wonderful and so i was going to print out their logo though and hold it up since it's really um not convenient to actually have a thing of ice cream that would melt beside me um gotta eat it fast (laughs) (laughs) but anyway not a move (laughs) 
<laughs> There's I, my my plug. I am, and I promise that I will not yet again have the digestive advantage argument with you. I will not. I've made my pitch. <laughs> I don't need to make it again. I don't need to harp on it. Just a product that changed my life and turned me from lactose intolerant into not, into not lactose intolerant. But whatever. I don't need to. Wait, you can, this is a conversation we've had with my son's allergist, and I'm not going to uh, go against what an allergist told us. Wait, I thought it was for so. you. No, it's Will. <gasps> Will is horribly allergic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm misremembering. I'm misremembering. So yeah, like no, 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 we could we yeah. could risk my life. That would be okay. No, I gotcha. Not, I gotcha. No, and there's a difference between lactose intolerant and milk allergy. Big difference. Big difference. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not intolerance. It's an actual right. allergy. No, I've got a uh, I've got a family friend that has that as well. Uh, does not a moo come out to California? Does Does it ship over here? That's a great question. No idea. Right. I just know I can find it in my local Walmart. Okay, cool. So, like, you know, you're not exactly the uh, best spokesperson, but okay. Um, uh, yeah, no, apparently not. However, we do have some great suggestions for how not a move could become a word in our language. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> this is great. I love it. Okay. Um, Moving on. Antipassive, um, and okay, and then reciprocal reflexive antipassive, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna throw these words down here because mm -hmm. these are the things that feel to me the most likely. Actually, I'm gonna throw in one more. Um, uh, and in the comments, Jason had thrown out evidentials. Uh, This is the the real big thinking on screen moment. I'll, I'll, I'll and now everybody's like, really, Jesse, you don't have that book? It's like the Bible for conlangers. And I'm like, oh, man, alive. I, it's pretty good. I'm missing out. I have so many other books, but not that one. So, I mean, I really don't like the idea of doing evidentials without at least asking Sylvia Sotomayor, who, of course is not just the queen of conlinging, but the queen of evidential specifically. Like, I feel like it would offend her if I did that. Um, well, it will need to be discussed. But let's, 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 let's take a look. Are, are evidentials in here? I don't remember. Lyle well, Campbell I don't show. know because I'm the person who doesn't have the book that I need to desperately get. And I don't know how I don't have it either. I'm... Hmm. Oh. I'm going to be looking it up to see if I have access. You know what I could do? I could see if my library gives me access online, and then I could look at it, too. Mm. Everybody else, open your books to page. <laughs> While the slacker tries to <laughs> <laughs> rushingly look it up online to see. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, did Was it on the podcast that we had the discussion about when I showed up to that English class and didn't have the book or, and had never heard of the book and like didn't know that we read it? Did, was, was that a discussion that we had on the podcast? I think that was on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm only halfway through the transcription, so I'm not even 100% sure. Um, <laughs> OMG, yes. I get to click to view it online. Thank you, University Library. Oh, nice. Wow. This is just a wonderful example from Lesgian, from Martin Haspelmath. He, he gets the best examples. Can we kick Father out of the house because he has lost the money? Yes. <laughs> oh, wait, you weren't looking for an answer. <laughs> okay, can you, what page was this <laughs> slash what chapter? I'm, I'm looking at 261. Um, uh, I'm looking oh, wait, at... I think I can actually type page numbers down here. Go. Is it? Does it have the king himself did it at the top? Yes, it does. Der König selbst hat es getan. Oh my goodness. I've never liked ebooks more. <laughs> <laughs> I normally don't like them, but this is this is fantastic. Okay. And so now what are we looking for? Uh, let's, uh, I was just taking a look at what Say could do. I don't think I've used Say very much. Um, 
uh, and in terms of grammaticalization, might be fun to do it here. Oh, I do like, I do like that. Isn't it interesting too how like English brain gets in the way so much like when you're reading examples because there is an example from um, the language of Kwame mm. and the verb is go but it means to say but like my brain momentarily <laughs> could not understand the example because it was like it means go but it also means say um, and I was so excited for a second like wow in this language and then I realized oh my gosh it's yeah. or not English <laughs> English brain that happens <laughs> okay. Oh man. Lost the money. This is and then I saw someone in the comments said they had a PDF and I wonder if that means like it's somewhere floating around online. Um, uh oh I mean, you know, you don't want to encourage piracy, but yeah, it's it's floating around. That's yeah. all I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> um I'm looking at a, at a real ebook in case anyone's wondering. Oh yeah, uh, it's a legal book. Now, how does this how does this example from Haspel Math work? Are you still on page two sixty one? Because I've now yeah. just been like, I'm I'm still trying to figure out can we kick father out of the house because he lost the money. Um, um great, great. We can. Okay, is there any way? Take oh, me. if I said wait. Oh my gosh. Because for anyone who doesn't have this, I'm going to pop a screenshot Ooh. into our shared document. Ooh. So that way, if you're staring at us just staring at books going, but what about me? We're going to take care of that. But just a second, I'm on a small screen right now, so it's <laughs> taking forever to <laughs> get three windows organized and out of the way and here is it's going to ruin the page sorry that's all right but let me try to pull it down um Ooh, look like at that. that there we go yeah this is what david is trying to figure out this um lesbian example yeah like um, so we have saying in there right and i don't know why it's been glossed in that manner um Especially because I see ease is an infinitive, right? So it looks like it's probably an infinitive since it ends in Z, but he didn't say that. <sighs> Martin right. Haspel math. I assume he's watching. We've tangled before. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you tangle with Haspel math? Because. But, but I'm going to. Because I'm gonna of nomenclature. That's why. Anyway, go, but go ahead. I'm just going to say, I don't know if that's the case because when it is marked as the infinitive, it is marked separately and it's separated from the takeout. And so yeah. Luhu's may be something different. It does end in a Z, which does make it rather suspicious that it could yeah. be infinitive form. But maybe that ooze is hard a little bit. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it absolutely could be. And if you look at the form of takeout, it is basically CVCV CV without the without the initial onset, which is exactly what Lehu's is. But he just glosses it as, as sane, which is really weird. Um, okay, so this is supposed to be a causative. What's being caused right now? Um. Be because based on the the verb here lose it, it's lose not being lost because i would have guessed that maybe it was the losing that ha that was being caused but why wouldn't he have glossed that as be lost um as a side note yeah for anybody else please put a blank line anytime you think <laughs> boss goes more than one line because I'm also struggling with figuring out I know what goes with what because it's all just seven lines of text I bet it was the it's publisher a, they were like this is going to be how many pages you need to cut and, out like 60 pages and they just don't care about <laughs> all of these oh my goodness dark horse just said verb which and I love it okay oh, I'm yeah. sorry Nakai says verb read witch. the paragraph before oh sure that would help um, Luhu's imperfective converb 
of Luhun say complementizer because causal conjunction? Because, because, because father, can we kick lost father money. out? Because all of that time we wasted, all we needed to do was just read it. And I Thank even you. included it in the screenshot. So I was like, oh, it starts before the example. Maybe that will be helpful. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Read the book. That's what you're supposed to do. Oh, hey, it's old. It's Egyptian. That's a language I've studied. Mm. You're, are you on a different one now? No, I just went to the next page. Okay, so now I understand how that's working. I can't do screenshots of every page. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, I figured out how that worked, um, and it wasn't exactly working the same thing. It was cause, not causative. Yes. And I was looking for causative. So maybe I, maybe I sent us on a wild goose chase. Now uh, I know I do know that it was evidentials, right? Yeah, that's and, right. that's, and that's very simple. Uh, how how that works? It's it's for the hearsay one. So in other words, like um, if you just have a two way distinction, the base form is direct, and then the say form is the the mm -hmm. hearsay. Um, it would make sense if we were going to if we we're going to somehow tie these into the codas since we have coda uh, two codas it would make sense to have a three-way distinction um in other words basic and then the s form and then the n form since we got them it's like it's like putting the cannon on the stage um so we could do that with evidentials but why would we hmm we don't have to okay um okay so i yeah. think for anybody at home following along, if you want to Where keep this that? lesbian example up, maybe do a quick screenshot now or something, because yep. um, I think we can get rid of it, right? Yep, getting rid of it. So do it now, forever. But Never see it again unless you hit yeah. rewind. <laughs> but let's, let's hang on to this idea when we need a word for because, hmm? I do like that. I Me really too. do. And now, like, I am super ashamed that I never have used this book before. I'm just, oh, so embarrassed. Mm. Instead, it, I call you and say, David, what would be a good word to turn into this? <laughs> and it's always oatmeal. Every single time I just tell you, use the word for oatmeal. <laughs> and I always have a word for it because you tell me to use it. So yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> It is it is important though I think that this is a, that this this language has converb forms um, yes because that makes it a lot easier because it's like you already have this weird verbal form right that just kind of is hanging out there so you might as well use it for stuff anyway okay deleting boop Good, goodbye all right it was fun while it lasted and if we wanted to use one of these as a converbial all right, somebody said page 152, mm. and I'm going there right now, and let me, uh, it was W. Watson, so that way I can mm -hmm. just not say somebody. Oh, sure. Ooh, give is a causative. Yeah, that's, that's an easy fun. one. That's an easy one. I've done that one before. Ooh, give is a verb to mark concern. That's pretty cool. Permissive function. I can't gosh have you ever been in one of those moments where you're like okay can can we just read this book right now instead of whatever we were supposed to be doing <laughs> but I probably need to not do that on live air yeah okay have we already created an ad position we have but we did it from nouns not verbs right yeah, we did, yes, because we did the agentive marker. Okay. Kind of in the same way. And then we did, and then the rest was numbers. So, yeah, the agentive marker um, was, uh, I think, was going to be like an ad position. Yeah, but it was, it, it came from a, the point is it didn't come from a verb. No. No. Okay. 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 So, uh, here, here are some some thoughts I have. Um, these guys can be alternative forms of um, uh, agreement. 
that is like it takes some sort of generic thing as agreement and it's interpreted as one of these three gentlemen um, evidentials we know how we get those it's just a matter of placement converb is something that might be useful but it's a big question mark how we get it and then these guys are gonna come from some sort of verb thingy me right so what, what was that again uh, that the thing me I know I, I mispronounced it not thingy me thing me thing me I know how to say I know how to say thing me is that a thing thing me oh. oh yeah absolutely absolutely here spelled like this thing me wait oh no yeah Thingamabob, yes. Thingamabob. Think of a Bob, yes. But thingamy is a thing. Go ahead, go ahead, look it up. Uh, it's right. It's in the dictionary, right next to your social security number. Um, what is it? I'll look it up for you. <laughs> oh my God, it is in the dictionary. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you can also spell it A M Y at the end instead of U M M Y. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's apparently very British. Yes. And so that okay. It's been a very British episode. <laughs> <laughs> And then you get in the comments, yes, Jesse, it's a word. Okay, okay. But you also have to remember, David pulls my leg all the time and mm. does these, like, teasing jokes. And so I'm I'm always trying to make sure I'm not just falling for everything. Yeah. By the way, though, nice shirt choice. Love it. Right? Yeah. I've been trying to, like, sit up every now and then. It's not just for my back, but if I can, <laughs> woo! My conling shirt. Yeah. It's wonderful. All right, okay, so, oh, so the point of saying this was this is going to have, in terms of like, if we're gonna do an environmental impact report, um, this is going to have uh, the same amount of impact as agreement because it's going to occupy the same place. Mm -hmm. So this is essentially um, an impact of zero. Here, impact zero. An applicative or a causative is going to have to be another verb, and there's going to have to be an, ag an agreement after it. So that's definitely going to be an impact of one. A converb, generally the way that you do it, it's it's not going to co-occur with agreement. So that's impact of zero. And then evidential impact of, I'm going to say 0.5, because <laughs> this is why. Um, mm -hmm. Evidentiality is going to be marked on all verbs, right? But depending on how many forms we have, one of them is going to be the base form. And so that's going to be an impact of zero. The other one's going to be an impact of one. Uh, and if there's three of them, then it's like, I don't know. What is that? Three. Or wait, it would go up from there. So six, seven. Let's see. Did, did you just type that out? <laughs> <laughs> And the last one has to end in seven because you always got to round up the final one. Yeah, it does. But Where? Well, it's off the screen. Oh, okay. I was like on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so man. now applicatives and causatives, the only thing is that uh, it has an impact of one, but however, uh, will enjoy little use. So it's, uh, in fact, I'm going to write this like this quasi-derivational whereas uh, there's no question that these guys are going to be inflectional um, my recommendation is that in terms of the uh, the the verb form itself I think we choose one of these to do one of these categories. Mm -hmm. um, quick side note, mm -hmm. um, George Corley makes a comment that um, he believes in the Converbs episode, um, he had said Converbs are a phenomenon of verb final languages. Um, and he doesn't remember if there's a why, some, probably something to do with how they grammaticalize. I have to tell you that I am shocked by that because the place where they make the most sense for me is verb initial languages. I will fold that into my knowledge of the world and will also look up... <gasps> there's nothing for converbs? 
in the world lexicon of grammaticalization? You gotta be kidding me. Do they have another name? Another name. Oh gosh. I am really distracted. Um, um interesting. I don't see another name other than well, I mean because mm. it because it expresses adverbial subordination, would it be under like subordinator type? Mm, it just failed me. Needle something needle will pick me up. I think we have to see if I have a search function. Are you? I, I'm not looking at the video right now. Are you unwrapping Copico? I think I heard it. Copico, the search function of the brain. Nice. Mm. Um, ooh, there is a search within. I'm gonna oh, search within so the good. ebook. Oh my gosh, I usually don't like ebooks, you guys. These are getting better and better. Mm. <laughs> but I'm so very excited. Okay, that's the abbreviation. That does mm. not help me. Oh, just delightful. Mm. Um, that was the lesbian example. Yeah, I mean, there are converbs in there. They know what converbs are. They just aren't going to tell us how to get them. <laughs> That's when they get you. They're like, hey, you want to find out how to do converbs? <laughs> Wait for the world lexicon of grammaticalization, too. It's twice as expensive. <laughs> I, I think you're going to have to, because it turns out the only time the word converb appears to be used in the book is pages 261 to 268, and all oh. of them are about luhus. Mm. Wow. And so... That's rude. Um, well, you know what? I think I'm going to have to take this off the table. The only place where I've used converbs before has definitely been in head initial languages. And now, George Cordley has just thrown me for a loop. I, I will admit, I haven't listened to the Converb Con Langry episode. I'm only slightly ashamed. I'm gutted by this. Absolutely gutted. I, I'll tell you what I'll be listening to after I finish our transcript. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I really believed in that. Oh, well. That's interesting, though. Why Why did you think that they made more logical sense in a verb initial? I always like hearing your, your pattern. It was because um, the idea is that, or at least in my head, the agreement was carrying over. And so it was just a way to mark that it wasn't an infinitive, right? But that the agreement still carried or it didn't matter. And like that was specifically how I uh, created them for um, Shibaisith, which is the one I did for Thor the Dark World. Um, the converb form was in complementary distribution or whatever, you know, the, the it was in the same place as the um, subject agreement. So it's like you either had subject agreement on the verb, or it was an infinitive, or some other non-finite form, or it was a converb. And like that was the whole point of it. It made sense. Well, so Viler says the very short converbs article on Wikipedia has examples which are not in verb final languages. Yes. And make sure they're... Let's make sure that those are not David's languages, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll will it into Sorry. existence. Snort laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Okay, so anyway. Um, I'm going to be thinking about that for some time. Man, got it. Well, and, Absolutely and got it. V was saying um, that they actually had listened to that episode today and remembers William saying he doesn't know of any verb initial ones. Um, so. Well, maybe you should go look at Wikipedia. We. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we definitely need to check that out. That's cool. Um, although, you know, maybe we'll, we'll check that out for funsies later, because if we're not going to do converbs here, then no. we don't have to get into it um, too terribly much. Here. So, so here's, here's, here's my thought. Here's my thought. Um, I would like to save evidentials for the mouse language. Yes. It just makes sense. Yeah. I mean, if you understand the nature of these mice, as, as I'm envisioning them, you'll see that it's going to make sense. Um, it's, it's, that's going to be a fun one. That's going to be a fun one when we get to the mice. 
um, because they're like they're like e each little mouse is like a little mini bureaucracy um, but kind of a delightful one you know I feel like yeah. this isn't making sense to you. It's, I'm blown away while trying to listen and read comments. Got it. <laughs> it's hard. Okay, each individual little mouse is its own little. Go on. Miniature, delightful little bureaucracy. <laughs> Although, maybe that's why my brain was like, really? Delightful bureaucracy? Those can't go hand in hand. Yes. But if they're miniature and mouse-like, then perhaps it'll be it'll be the type of thing where it says where you know you ask the mice how are you doing today? It's like well that's an interesting question. Let's let's set up a committee meeting to figure out how this works. But they'll be delighted about it, you know. Because they're so excited. Yes. And so then it would be very important to know is yes. this something I said, I heard, I saw. Mm-hmm. I do like that. Sorry, I am, I am focused. <laughs> I was I was just trying to also also mm. keep up um, and Nakai had copied something other oh other terms have been used to refer to converbs such as adverbial participle conjunctive participle gerund gerundive and verbal adverb is that what the um, gerundive means is that a, a different way of calling a converb a gerundive yeah and that's interesting because I seen gerundive floating around but because i don't use it um i don't know it apparently the more grammatical definition it's also derived from a verb of course but that it functions as an adjective denoting something that should or must be done no yeah. it, it, it's That's, it comes from latin grammar and you know how like mm -hmm. apparently latin and greek get all of their own special terms for grammar just because they're fancy um, mm -hmm. And other languages, you know, yeah. So that's where I, I'm familiar with seeing it. And if Mad Latinus were on here, he'd tell us exactly what the gerundive is. But this reminds me, have we talked about the exhortative uh, mode or mood in Wikipedia? I, I have not discussed it with you, no. Okay. Is this, you said in Wikipedia? Okay, so. That there's something there? Yeah, so you can do this on your own time, everybody, but it's it's a lot of fun. So there's a mood called the exhortative and also things like called the jessive and so on. Anyway, um, whoever decided the to write awesome. whoever decided to write the English Wikipedia article of this has decided that English it's like, you know, so like many this so like many languages have, you know, no forms for this or one or two or three forms. Um, English has over nine different forms. And you're like, excuse me? <laughs> English? English has the Hortative, exhortative, jussive, inhortative, and like all of these terms. And it's just like one Wikipedia editor who's decided that English is this super special language that has all of these different, very specific grammatical moods related to hortatives and has written them all up. And it's like so nobody's gainsaid I, it. They just said, like, ah, whatever, let them have it. <laughs> I think, though, that they took it down because. Currently, if you look up exhortative in Wikipedia, it's this tiny little pitiful <laughs> thing that really just says what it is. Go to the um, hortative. Try the hortative. Well, and then that's where you have to go. Um, and there's a very clear uh, up at the top that it's this is English speaking. It needs citations. There's all <laughs> sorts of orange warnings at the top. So, like, if you're paying attention, then you see. Um, but, yes, the hortative constructions that are listed, there are several <laughs> listed. <laughs> and yeah, it is all all very much English. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and this and that's sad because Wikipedia so often has good linguistics articles and I actually I do yeah. tell my students quite often like if you're confused start with Wikipedia just to get an overview oh, um, it does. Look at the sources that are cited um, and so that makes me sad that something um, like that which is difficult to understand anyway would be sent from that article it's uh, you know you know why it's because because there are lots of linguists that do like write-ins you know where they where they get together and say okay all we're doing all day is 
uh, rewriting and editing Wikipedia articles on linguistics, and that's really cool. But I guarantee you that just nobody's happened to care about this or look okay. it up, and so it's just it just exists there on an island. It's just waiting, and somebody at Wikipedia has noticed because, like I said, it is um, barred at the top with the orange warning signs of saying, "Oh yeah, hey, it's oh." Oh, wait, sorry, not to interrupt you, but Mike, yeah. you're a Latin teacher by day. Can you answer the gerundive question, or did you already, and I am only now just seeing you say that you're a Latin teacher? I mean, yeah. you may have already. Oh, wait, you have already. By the way, <laughs> I'm not signed in under the Link Time Studio. Do you get special notifications when they at those, the at Link Time Studio? In oh, no, because I'm, I'm signed into Daedalus. And I'm signed into mine, otherwise I can't. We should probably sign into Lang Time, huh? But I couldn't get the comments if I did that. Really? Why not? Should, yeah, I don't know why. It wasn't showing me the, the comments. And so I ended hmm. up signing in under my personal account so I could see comments. Um, so gerundive is Latin as a verbal adjective. The future oh, passive adjective. participle often oh. necessity or obligation. Why don't they just call it the future passive participle then? Why does it need its fancy term? Ridiculous. Right? Um, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I, you know what? <laughs> While you're going on, I'm going to try on YouTube to sign in under my other, under the Langtime Studio account and see if it is possible. Okay. While you do that, I'm going to make, <laughs> I'm going to make my pitch for this. So I like the idea of the verbs being a little bit smaller, um, in this language. If we're going to have reduplication, then it is already you're already guaranteeing that the verbs are going to be a little bit longer, um, and, and and you know kind of heavy, and they're sitting out in front of the in front of the the sentence, right? So I don't want to do too much. So I was thinking that if instead we have some dedicated form for either uh, reflexive or reciprocal, we probably don't need both. Um, mm -hmm. It's very rare for languages to distinguish both, um, despite what you've read. Um, and then maybe throw on something there for the anti-passive if we feel like we need it. Yeah, we might. It might be useful. It might be useful. And these things can co-occur with um, the absolutive argument agreement. Um, and then we'll have our environmental impact of zero. It's, you know, sustainable conjugation. Okay. Sustainable so organic I am, contribution. I am typing, yes, it is sustainable. <laughs> um, I'm letting people know. I am now signed in <laughs> to the chat and can see an orange bar when somebody adds us. Whoa. So, so go for it. Tag away now. <laughs> I swear the first week when we did it, I could not get into the video with comments. And so that's why I switched accounts. I was like, forget it. I know how to get in under mine. Um, <laughs> and so I've just seriously been trying to read all the comments, which is why when David says wonderful things like delightful miniature bureaucracies, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm reading comments. Okay. Nice. So tagging. Oh, look at you all. You're, you're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Um. Okay, so then the, I was going to answer a question here. Yeah, we're going to have reduplication on nouns. We just haven't figured it out yet. Um, probably not going to be um, inflectional, probably going to be derivational. In other words, that, that ship has sailed for plurals. So it'll probably be derivational of some nature. Um, but yeah, we'll have reduplication elsewhere. Um, anyway, how did, how did you feel about my pitch for reciprocal slash reflexive anti-passive? Because I know that you were hanging on every word. I, as I was typing comments and pulling up separate accounts. Um, mm. Excuse me while I rewind the video. <laughs> oh, anti-passive is exactly what it sounds like. It's the opposite of a passive. So here's here's your English, right? You know, uh, the man hugged the fish. The fish was hugged by the man. Passive, right? Mm -hmm. The only deal is that in an absolutive language, you essentially have uh, uh, the man did hugging, right? No, wait, no. Uh, it's almost like the fish was was hugged by the man. Um, 
is is the basic, and so the anti-passive would be the man hugged something. And I remember that was actually one of the hardest features for me to wrap my brain around in grad school because we hadn't really worked um, in undergrad courses. Like I had heard the term, but I hadn't really needed to think too much about it. And I remember in grad school when we were going over this, this was one of those little, that, it was like a, a mind blowing type thing where I just, it took me forever to come to grips <laughs> with the fact that, you know, not all languages have to work the way English does. Mm. Um, but just going in that sort of opposite direction from what I had um, conceived, you know, grammatically for those sentence structures. Um, and because of our language, I think anti-passive would actually make sense. I think so too. Was that part of your mini pitch? Since I, in hanging on every word, I do know that the gist of it was that we're looking more closely at those for that zero impact type thing. Um, were we voting between them? See, I'm, I was really paying attention. It, I'm, I'm so on it today. Well, uh, the idea was if we wanted to, 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 I mean, applicatives and causatives do save time. Yes. Um, in a different, I'm sorry, do save space in a different way. Mm -hmm. But this also uh, saves space and it's shorter. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the idea is um, if we're if we're how to how to how to say this how to how to say this we're we're voting on what's going to be a part of the actual verb itself in the verb form mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of these two because if we're not doing these on the verb form then they'll just be um, paraphrastic. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I do I. Whatever we do for those, I actually would want those to be paraphrastic. Well, you know what? For this language, it just feels... It's your birthday. Is it my birthday already? Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do this. And so now... And, yeah. Okay, and while you're doing that, uh -huh. um, Jan also likes the antipassive. Um, and just to answer the other question, uh, David is on the chat watching but not logged into this account so he's not going to see the orange bars of the Atlanta Times studio mentions like I am. Well, unless, unless you at me specifically. So uh, you have to at Daedalus. Mm. <laughs> okay. So now we're good. Oh, look! There. He took a break to type too. He's a much faster typer, I think. If I were looking at the camera, I would see. Oh no, that looks, that sounds threatening. <laughs> <laughs> watching. <laughs> okay, Every so. post you make. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so many stalking songs back then. Mm hmm. Very popular. Um, police are kind of a strange band, weren't they? They they actually were. So it's like yeah. it's so weird because like everybody's introduction who like wasn't a fan was basically every breath you take, right? Right. And so he's you know singing and it sounds like you know he's doing kind of a husky, sexy voice or whatever. And then it's like you hear most of the police's songs, and it's like, oh, I thought that your octave was here. It's up here? <laughs> it's like, okay. That's just that's just how you're coming out of the box, okay. Uh, oh, goodness. Okay, so right. Nikai says that since all our basic verbs are intransitive, mm -hmm. are they? We have some transitive ones yeah. um you could do thing caused is sent by causer yeah I'm just thinking about how we're putting those together send that's that's kind of a good one um oh well let's tell clinton high as well um that's i'm gonna write that down somewhere um i'm gonna delete jesse the ghost okay Oh, good memories. Good memories. Yep. You send as causative. Gonna um, just kind of throw that in there. Um, okay. Laughing at me or laughing at? Am I crunching too? Long? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna type something here. Right. Um, oh, but I do need. I'm still in green. How did that happen? After even after you deleted everything. Oh no. This is, 
Let me, I'm just going to highlight all that and make sure it's all <laughs> this is, normal text Is this color. the sixth sense? Like, are you really not here? Does everybody <laughs> see Jesse or is it just me? <laughs> I swear this is working. Oh no, and now I have to zoom back up here. Mm. Um, okay, release. That means to be weird, strange. <laughs> No, that, that was a suggestion. <laughs> mm. Mm. Continuing the British theme of this episode with the single quote marks. Oh, have we been doing double quotes? <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Fixing. I mean, it's, it's neither here nor there, but the point is, if, is. if we're getting to this. Mm-hmm then we need to jump ahead to, to pronouns. Yes. Because now we're doing agreement, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if we're doing agreement, then we need to do pronouns. Yes. So, um, let's, uh, I don't think I even have a place for them because they don't deserve one. Um, you don't have a chart down below? Oh, below, yeah. But I don't have like a place for them up here. They don't. Well, isn't that though in general? Place. Because they're just. I mean, they're words. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's essentially like a chart that you don't want to necessarily put in the dictionary. But um, I yeah. don't think you need to write about them unless, unless we're going to be doing like subject object forms or things like that. Yeah, so we've got our pronouns all decided. We just need to decide what tone is associated with each one. So, Phil, Phil, Phil. No. <laughs> Terrible. All right. I'm sorry. So, one thing, my... So, Chris always jokes that at some point he's going to make his own language. Mm. And it's all going to be the syllable ba. Mm -hmm. But in different tones. And so, like, how many syllables are in a word? Of course, it could, you know, come together for, like, super long words, but they're all ba. Um, and so it's so funny, though, to hear him do his examples because it sounded about like that. So he'll be like, I could do, like, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> like, you know, like all these things. And I just keep saying that's that would be the most horrible <laughs> language. <laughs> Could be worse. Could have been implosives. <laughs> I would never be able to speak the language. At least with with ba, I can I can do it. My tones will be all wrong, but I could sure try. Exactly. I think Pablo did that perfectly. That's exactly what I did. <laughs> uh, okay. So pronouns. We're not doing dual, so we don't have to worry about that. Mm -mm. Well, and let's do third person later. Let's first talk about first and second person, because we know those things are going to be distinguished mm -hmm. in the singular. So let's start there. First so person have, singular rabbit. So Dark Horse has already asked, please make Ime the source of the first person singular. Um, and then, um, is that replied? That sounds more like third person singular. So, mm, um, yeah. that does sound more like third person singular. Let's, let's hang on to that one over here. I'm just going to mm -hmm. write this in parentheses. Um, not obviously it's not going to be the form, but just, let's just hang on to that. Uh, okay. So first person, as far as we know, it, it never really evolves from anything it just kind of comes into being because we think we think ourselves so important that, that we refer to ourselves as something special like <laughs> <laughs> okay i like I, I don't i can't even do anything with, with that i was going to try to tie it back into rabbit culture somehow and i don't know what to do with it it's the only occurrence of that sound in the entire language that's it only oh there. No. my gosh! Anyway, what? So, so here, here are the things to remember. In terms of codas, we have n, we have s, and we have nothing. It would be nice 
if we could tie these in somewhere, but not, you know, not necessarily. One of these could just be the, the, the reflexive or something. But, um, it was, it was the, the, the handy passive, but, um, anyway, uh, let's, okay, so first person. Um, beyond just saying, like, we're going to make a syllable, um, although there have been a couple questions. Jason had asked, do they ever evolve from demonstrative phrases? Meaning, like, this guy thinks whatever, and, like, this one. Not, um, not as far as we know. Third person, yes. Third person, definitely. But first person, okay. no. Not as far as we know. Um, well, Super Heisan just says, hey, let's do un for first person singular. Um, and Mike asked if I can come from the word for heart, because you'd only hear your own heartbeat. Like that. I thought I would do that. Um, in Eternal, I definitely see your comment while he's thinking about that, the um, singular pockle plural with additional senses, like tree, grove, forest. That would actually be really cool, especially with such a large counting system. It may be it may make sense to have like one some and then a whole lot kind of plurality so that's an idea we can hang on to we we've um, already got our plural set for nouns though that's true so that would be kind of interesting to not um i do think though right? nikai makes a comment that for third person singular perhaps we would have rabbit versus non-rabbit third person singular pronouns and yeah i think that's definitely a conversation we're going to have to have as we move forward animate versus inanimate when we when we get there yeah. yeah um okay and then so yeah what do you think about the heart i think i'm caught up on most of do we have a word for heart yet or no i'm gonna say no because we had talked about um and that's interesting because i think the first time we had talked about it it was that metaphorical sense or like mm -hmm. the shape of it sense um this is that idea of you hear your heart um, and we did not have any sort of I, I I mean I suppose in theory it uh, I mean I, I don't think it's ever happened uh, I think it's more likely that the you know just the the advent of the ego was just enough to say <laughs> well, I'm gonna, that's all we needed <laughs> yeah really um, Let's see. Indefinite pronoun. Oh. Hmm. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Da, 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 da. Hair and locative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. H comes after. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Just taking a look. I'm so excited to hear what you do find. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, Hagege characterizes the relevant conceptual transfer in the following way. There are languages which use spatial adverbs with the meaning of personal pronouns. Japanese kotira here often refers to the speaker. <gasps> Vietnamese dai oh. here and and dai those look exactly the same there are used with the meanings I and you respectively when one wants to avoid the hierarchical hierarchical or affective connotations linked to the use of personal pronouns we have so far found no clear instances of grammaticalized categories categories arising in this way um, so it sounds like uh, the way these things are used is in addition to already existing pronouns as a way to avoid pronoun usage. That's kind of interesting. Uh, taking a look at... And then Chinese, apparently uh, there's a dialect that uses a word for here to mean we. And that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then there's a repetition of the uh, Japanese and Vietnamese examples. Hmm. I don't know. I think this sounds like uh, it sounds like a dissertation for somebody. 
but I don't know how much data there will be. I mean, it, you'd have to take a look at the first person pronouns, I think, of the world's languages plus relevant words and just see if with all that data, maybe, maybe you can posit something. Because, of course, the words are going to be so old, so impossibly yeah. old, that there's never going to be any records. It'll, you'll just have to be guessing, you know, kind of looking at the extant sound changes for all the various languages and see if maybe you can get to a point where it's like, all right, I can get us to here, and from here I can posit a bunch of sound changes that gets us way up there, thousands and thousands of years in the past. I don't know. Do we, this is, I'm going to be going through my own search of. Very good. Um, Very good. Some Indo-European forms. It's a little bit more Jesse. There we go. I just gave everybody 2% more Jesse. Two. <laughs> oh, did you move? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um. But anyway, yeah, that is interesting because, I mean, even, like, I love the um, Indo-European root dictionary type things because I just mm -hmm. like seeing all the connections that can be made. And, like, yeah. literally that entry is so very short. It's, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's egg is the, the root and nominative personal pronoun, personal pronoun first person singular. And yeah. That's, um really all they say about it and then it moves on so that is really interesting and I had never um, stopped to think about that lack of connection and why that would be other than the fact that you're right we do need something for I but then why there would be a separate form me um, those oblique forms that often have the me and there's actually a me root for that why, they why can't. would we do that if we just want to say yeah here um so anyway yeah if we want to stick with un, um i of course am then a fan of is for second person because is just sounds fun i like to when i when i do this i like to imagine the speakers and imagine them you know saying you know i and you you know is. yeah it just you know and I, I think it's also because it just always reminds me of, um, you know, ice in Old English was pronounced ease. And so it just always makes me happy. I don't mm, know why I like that word so much, but I do. Ease. Yeah, I, I turned that into intriguous and I turned it into as. One of, the f oh, nice. one of the few words that has like a word final Z. It just felt right. Hmm. Anyway, um, that would certainly... That would certainly give us this, and we can have third person be nothing. It's easy enough. Um, but, uh, yeah. The simplest thing to do right here, of course, would be me, right? And, and it would be a shortening of ime. Um, but uh, something else that we can look at is we'd have to develop demonstratives and get something from that um, what do we want to do first talk about third person pronouns or the plurals of the first and second person what do you think let's do plurals first third I, I feel like once we hit third person we're gonna get it but I also think that that does open um, you know, bigger so let's think about plurals to see if we want some sort of pattern or yeah First, it's just going to be yeah. Oh, also, I apparently. Oh no, that was just I did not read it wrong. Someone so Super Hassan had suggested first hmm. person singular. Un. Um, Pablo was very upset by that, so I had to scroll up to make sure I didn't misread it. And Pablo had said that sounds <laughs> like a second person singular, and <laughs> so. <laughs> so they're they're feeling um, very very differently about that <laughs> yeah you just gotta sometimes you just gotta make decisions and then stick <laughs> sit with them um oh I mean, but this is cute Zvi said unis is we because it's you and i 
Uh, yeah, it was from um, Isaac. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, that's that's an idea. The first question I had though was um, if we were going to do inclusive and exclusive for this, if that made sense. For some reason, mm -hmm. I'm feeling for the rabbits, no. But obviously for the mice, they have to because they're bureaucratic. Indeed. Very and good. And they need to know, like, what we are we talking about? Yep. No, oh, yeah. So... So then would second person be Isis? <laughs> Is it you and you? <laughs> well, let's, let's, write down, let's write down some candidates here. So, right... And these aren't necessarily going to be their final forms, but uh, now um, then let's let's get our plurals. Um, what are our plurals again? You mean for the nouns? Yes. I'm going there. So we have ah uh, or ahs, right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find it. There we go. Then there we, it is. Then we have yes, eh, yeah. mm -hmm. and then the in and, and to. Mm -hmm. So the ahs, right? What is this? What's it come from? Is it has? Is that what it comes from? Um, that one. And we even wrote this down because I had said, why don't we have this written down somewhere? Um, oh my gosh. Where did, I swear, we actually wrote it down somewhere because I know the bottom one is like pile. This is group. It means group. What was it? Was it just... Who's our word for group? There it is. There it is. Um, it, the proto form was a schwa s. So s. Oh, a schwa s. s. Yes. A, oh, ah. Oh no. Sorry. I'll, I'll get us back. Okay. So, um, so uh, another uh, way that we could do this is be like whole whole group, something that derives from our word for Warren. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do we have? Can uh, no. we do a word for Warren? No, we don't have those words yet. Um, okay. I was just, I'm nodding along thinking, wait. Juniper suggests maybe saving, um, reduplicating for reflexive pronoun forms. Well, we're not going to need that. Uh, we're not going to need reflexive pronouns because we're going to have a reflexive form of the verb. That was the whole okay. reason that we're doing this. Oh, um, yes. You're right. Yeah. Um. Okay. Wait, would that mean that our second person plural could be as is? <laughs> Pronounced differently, of course, but. Indeed it could. As is. <laughs> another okay That's so, and then, are, so it could be yeah as soon and when we added these the um, on the nouns the um, stress had stayed on the root and so oh yeah Presumably, right? That's why all of our nouns um, 
the add a syllable, we have to type the, the accent mark for stress marking? Um, oh, wait a minute. It's just an S. Oh, so, well, good. I was going to say, so then we should get rid of the A. And it would be soon. Yeah. And that's kind of cute. Oh, it's sun. Sun um, and sis. It'd be sun and sis. Oh, wow. Kind of like that. That's cute. Of course, pronounced, you know, maybe soon and sis. Yeah. But, you know, as someone who loves her sister, <laughs> that'd be fun to type sis so much. Okay, I think I think that's I think that's good for that one. Let's just do that. But then okay. let's let's sit with first person plural a little bit more. Uh. Interesting. Are you are you staring at the chat now? Yeah, a little bit. Uh huh. Um, for some reason, I like the unis form for the first person plural. Hmm. Um. That, of course, then suggests inclusive we, but... Yes, it does. Which would then maybe be like, maybe there is like a unme form for the exclusive. Um, hmm. So maybe it's back on the table. I kind of like, with their world view, I kind of like the idea of, of, of doing like whole group or Warren or something like that, the great Warren. So, okay. So like, um, the word itself would just be like a meaning of Warren. Um, I do like that, which means we need a word for Warren. Yeah, and now it, it could, it would be further phonologically reduced. So we can have two different words for it. You know, word for Warren and then the reduced form would be the pronoun. Mm -hmm. um, um, okay, so hey, look, they all agrees with us. Best idea. Uh, it is a rowdy chat today. So, someone, what do you think? Someone as in anyone, they can't lose it. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a word for Warren, so. And then, so. Provide, please. <laughs> I, well, I need a, a better understanding of how this word Warren is used in English. Where did it come from? Why did we use the word Warren? And exactly what are we talking about? Is it a network of tunnels? Is it just does it just refer to a lot of rabbits? Like oh, what does it it's refer to? Literally a network of interconnecting rabbit burrows. Okay. And so I was using it in the sense of I guess maybe <laughs> litter or pack or group as a collective noun, but definitely worn in the way it's intended to be used as the location rather than the people. By the way, um, Alice, Alice H., that was basically what I was thinking of. That was essentially my idea um, in terms of, and by the way, not in terms of ownership, but like we're, we're, we're thinking this along the same lines there that, you know, that the rabbits believe in, you know, that everybody is a part of a, of a great Warren. It's all interconnected. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, the universe is part of Warren in oh. English is from Game Park. Yes, I actually was just going to stop you to say that, but I didn't want to interrupt huh. you again because I've been doing that a lot lately. No, but <laughs> I I interrupt you plenty though, so you're due. You, yeah. That's good. Full of interrupters. Um, okay, so we have some potential. Um, <gasps> Alice says, oh my gosh, use tunnel collapsed on their burrow to refer to exiled individuals. Ooh. That is, I'm writing that one down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll hang on to that for later. Um, so I, I get what, what Juniper is saying in that uh, she's trying to wrap her head around how this is 
first person plural as opposed to third person plural, but um, I guess the idea is that, you know, if it's truly inclusive, then, you know, it includes you as well, it includes the speaker. Uh, I understand that one would be, have reservations about speaking for the Warren, but I think it works in like, you know, um, in like, you know, a French revolutionary way, like, you know, together the Warren is strong. Anyway, but it, there's no way it can be that small, right? It's got to be bigger. Um, oh, I see. Wait, what? No. What? I'm typing suggestions that have popped up for the word Warren. These are proto forms. I got tired of typing the asterisk after one. So that would be like in water. What would that? There. Let me let me check that out. Um, okay. Oh my goodness! Just keep getting more and more comments, and then. Nueda. Hmm. Oh, and Svi had asked about uh, formality. We have not talked about formality yet. Oh no, I I'd imagine it wouldn't come into play here. I mean, the mice definitely, but not for the rabbits. Um, oh, and also, Juniper, if you did want to say something like that where you're kind of leaving out others to say something like, quote, me and my gang, we went to beat up another group of rabbits. I mean, you can definitely, because in English, if you think about that, too, when you say we, do we mean all of a collective society? Like, we need to do this um, as just a general human being society? Or are you talking about, like, you and me specifically? And so it's like language is have that ambiguity quite frequently. <laughs> oh my god. Memer says when there's no fighting between Warrens, the rabbits are in a state of war and peace. <laughs> <laughs> Quote of mm. the day. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh my goodness. Uh, and, and Jason, in turn, I'm going to nominate David to take the recycling now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Okay, so these <laughs> y'all are great. This is so good. Um, there's also Dark Horse has a word suggested for rose. Did we do rose? Rose bush? For some reason, that sounds familiar. But why were we doing, besides just you like the word, if we do a word for rosebush? Perhaps, do you grow roses? Perhaps? Yes, yes I do. Have you, did you know that? We have a series of rose bushes out there. Briar. Um, nice. I also, I don't have very many, but I have like three rose bushes. Um, oh, Dark Horse says that was on Reddit, and oh, the yeah. suggestion was that this word could be related to Briar. Okay, okay. I'm, Sorry, going I, back to Warren because I'm, I missed the Warren though, Buffett joke. Um, why is it that they could throw Briar Rabbit into that Briar bush and he doesn't get hurt? Like, can rabbits just avoid the thorns? I don't know, like, you know what I mean? I mean, it's a fictional story. No, but like, it, it's it's supposed to be, like, it's based on real rabbit culture, I have to believe. Okay. I don't know. But isn't this, <laughs> doesn't he get thrown in a tar pit? Uh, yes, that's how they yeah. catch him. And then he okay. says, now what are you going to do with him? And he's just like, and then that's where Briar Rabbit says, whatever you do, please don't throw me in that briar patch. And then, you know, the, the fox says, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And he throws him in the briar patch, not understanding evidently that rabbits, I guess, are immune to thorns. I don't know. 
Well, uh, Matei says it's obviously because he has a plus three favored terrain bonus and a death saves on the prior patch. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes okay uh, okay so going back to our list of suggestions um and i will stop being okay there we go um so by the way i don't i don't get this because we don't have a proto j what's that supposed to be that's a good question maybe that wasn't a proto form and i don't even remember where i saw it so if this was your suggestion please let us know um yeah what was so. meant there so that may have been the, um, but then even then, wouldn't it just be Jaeger? If it were I E G E and then well, yeah. K E, it can't be protoform. We didn't have a G. Um, yeah. Okay. So anyway, that one may need some finagling. But I, I have to say, like I'm kind of liking this one here. Ngueda. You like the Ungueda? Yeah, Ungueda. Um let me see what Wasi comes out of. Is it just Wasi? Yeah, Wasi. I mean, I would think so. Yeah. I kind of like this in Weta for Warren because it just sounds so formal. You know? It's like... And, and furthermore, it's something that's very big that's going to get shortened way the heck up. Um, right because what's going to happen is essentially it's just going to be like this um anyway yeah so oh ah, ah what i do what i do okay whatever you did everything so then anyway oh my god <laughs> i cannot see oh there what <laughs> we did not just make way, but it is way, and it's way, but it's we. When you, oh my gosh. Um, so so, and that would be the stress syllable, so that would make sense. Yeah. So this this is what I did. This is what I did. Um, I, uh, right. So the first thing, right. Let's say this is our word. Let's say it was at that stage, but it wouldn't have been. It would have been much earlier, right? We're we're gonna lose that uh, initial stressed syllable. And we're gonna end up with something like, you know, and then we're basically gonna lose that. Mm, it's just gonna drop out. So we get weta. And then the idea is this would just super reduce until we got this, which eventually just that becomes this. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I my mean, god! You know. I like the deflating sound. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mateus is like, it's defensible. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know what? Okay, so Jason just posted something, and I've, I've got to ask this too, if you know of like a term for the phenomenon of feeling bad for making a word in an off-priori language that sounds like a familiar Natling word, especially when it's your native word yeah. and especially when it means the same thing as your native word it's just it's it's unfathomable and now i gotta know who came up with this form because i bet you never guessed what it's gonna happen. <laughs> so and it was way up there so if it was you you're yeah. gonna tell me because i'm not gonna search um <laughs> But uh, no, it was up pretty high. There's no, there's no term for that. No, there probably should be. <laughs> and Veronica asked if there's a method for the the clipping the way you're doing it, and I, you, I really think you're doing it um, in the way that we tend to do it is based on the stressed syllable is the one that gets to stay, and other things yeah. start dropping out. Yeah. Um, and in a word like this, I think it makes sense for the unstressed prefix to drop first. Yeah. Um, not prefix, but it's, first syllables yeah. rather. Um, because normally the stress would be on the first syllable, and so getting rid of mm. that first syllable just kind of makes sense. I'm gonna gonna name drop another thing here. There's this book right here. It's called uh, "The Evolution of Grammar" uh, by Joan Bybee uh, oh, I love and then Joan Bybee. Revere Perkins, and then William Pagliuca. So this is where Joan uh, Bybee. Um, comes up or posits this theory about essentially a second level of reduction that happens to um, morphological elements specifically 
And the idea is that, you know, there are lots of different types of sound changes that can apply to a language. But when it comes to the uh, sound changes that apply specifically and exclusively to morphological material, it is always reduction. It is always reduction. So in other words, like, you know, simplification of the vowel qualities and, you know, lenition of the consonants. Um, that's, and, you know, chopping of things that aren't. Uh, you know, so it's like this sound change right here that I did, D to ETH to basically nothing, maybe with a state of H, but probably not. Um, that's not a sound change that applies in our language, but it's a sound change that I was applying to this because I think it made sense um, that it would just kind of get railroaded over uh, in some way. But yeah, Evolution of Grammar, this book honestly changed my life. It was amazing, and I love it. Ugh. It was also where she has this wonderful paragraph about the irrealis and how in like the most polite and academic way, she said that uh, basically anybody who uses irrealis to describe the grammar of a language simply doesn't know what they're talking about and hasn't done enough research into the language. <laughs> it's fantastic. I love it. And I want to just type this out um, yeah. as a suggested term from light D Hampire or Light Vampire. Um, this is our new term for when you create a word accidentally <laughs> that ends up being the same word in your own language. Oh, so you mean um, skle? Yes, that's that's it. <laughs> so now I did one too, but it's like you know you you come up with a word like we and then you just look at it and go uh skle. <laughs> oh man oh okay okay so um i think it was w watson i saw a me up earlier and i think that was w watson replying to say that was screw that was it their i'm suggestion. out <laughs> oh my god <laughs> just gonna hold on a sec <laughs> wait <laughs> that was from <Screw> Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Oh. Um, and if we want to have that a part uh, of the uh, of the <laughs> of the, the the acronym in parentheses as an example, <laughs> then it's <laughs> we. <laughs> Matei's sclerotic language. Oh my god. Okay, I think we have hit um, the happy hour of conling and giddiness. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, okay, so are we happy with what we have here? Um, do we want to potentially turn some third person voting of pronouns over to the yeah holsters um because we are in our final 10 minutes and yeah. as much as i think we can get more done i also think that um this discussion is going to be more than 10 minutes yeah i think that the first question is going to be our uh, for third person are we just going to do um one uh bear bear third person uh two um animate versus inanimate or three, uh, this is essentially replicating our nouns. So animate versus inedible versus mm -hmm. edible. Um, and, um, and then in terms of plurality, for myself, I would rather just do a single plural form. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what form that is gonna take, but I think it'd make things easier. Uh, and then, of well, course, I mean, obviously easier because there's only one form. And then, a, you know, a separate question is like, if if we decide on two or three, do we leave do we leave the verbs alone? I think we should. Um, okay, Juniper says one more suggestion: um, mm -hmm. rabbit versus non-rabbit. So then it's not animate, inanimate, but literally like I see you, but you're not a rabbit, so you get a different word. Hmm. Throw that in as a... So putting inedible, not in, sorry, totally not throwing in, <laughs> but, but taking, taking the non-rabbits out of the animate. 
I oh you know what actually you know what that's 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 kind of a corollary to to so in other words um, let's call that two uh, a all animates versus all inanimates or to be uh, rabbits versus other. Mm -hmm. uh, and what the result of this will be in effect that non rabbits equal inanimate. Right, right. So mm. basically, you'd be voting on whether you want non rabbits to be considered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a simple enough vote. I'll give it some thought. Um, this is pretty good for, that's pretty good for a pronoun. Um, but yeah, I still have no idea what to do with plural at all. I'm giving it some thought. Are you looking at chat? Yeah, and I think maybe I misunderstood Juniper's comment. I think what Juniper was saying was rabbit, oh, rabbit oh, and oh, inanimate. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. So you, actually, that's you know what? Way. Yeah, let's. I just saw. I like that better. I think. So do I. Let's let's write that. Okay. okay. Rabbit, animate. Uh, and of course, Juniper says we can go crazy and have the option of four. Rabbit, non-rabbit, edible, inedible. That's that's the one I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> which, and so don't put it as an option. Which means that everybody's going to vote for it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think that's good. And also at some point we will need, Veronica had asked, do we have an Ingala word for punch drunk? And we need one at some point. <laughs> Topico. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I wrote that, but I meant that. Sorry. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, the the source of this one is probably going to come from a word that means uh, not 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 prey. Um, predator. Okay. That's, I mean that makes sense. It's a guess, uh, even though, um, and that actually might be kind of fun. Because then the question is, do we refer to the mice with this one or with this one? The mice? Yeah. Interesting. Because that wouldn't necessarily be strictly applied that if you're a rabbit, but we're going to group you as the rabbit category. <laughs> Hold on. That. Did you just say? Did you just say category? I said category, oh, but category. I mean category with the grabbits would make more sense. <laughs> um, so, you know. And so, yeah, it looks like other people are kind of saying some of the same things with like predator, prey, inanimate. And that would essentially be what rabbit would be the, the prey. Non-rabbit, animate would be the predator. The only reason I balked at that is because um, kind of weird to describe yourself as prey. Right. Uh, but, you know, if we were going to use the word for, if it was going to drive from the word for rabbit anyway, I mean, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grab it. <laughs> oh, of course. It's going to be first person, second person, third person, and grab it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's it. That's it. It's beyond fourth person. Um, and then Veronica <laughs> says to look the Iceland mice, Iceland mice, in the encrypted books. I don't even know what those are, but I am writing that down. Huh. Excellent. All right. Have it, have it now. Okay. Okay. Hmm. You know, um. And, and Mike does make a good suggestion here that rabbits that live near mice maybe would consider them part of the rabbit animate pronoun, and there mm. could be some that don't, and just group them as the non-rabbit, and so there could be some language play there. Oh my goodness, um, what if their word for mouse was small rabbit? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That would be fun. I mean, rabbit they, they come from the same, you know, 
I mean, what is that? Genus? I don't know. They're they're both rodentia, right? Technically, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, small eared rabbit. Oh my. Okay. Um. As a side note, I'm seeing so many, so many wonderful suggestions that we honestly just couldn't stop and pay attention to, including I, one of them had even suggested like the word for briar being related to the word for soldier. Um, so many wonderful suggestions. Please, please, please make sure you check out um, our Reddit where there's an entire, our subreddit, um, there's an entire thread um, about suggestions for development. And I promise you, um, other people are looking and commenting. We are looking. And that's a great way to get these ideas in a place where we'll remember them. And so please, please head over there and make some of those comments. um, Because there are so many good things going on in here. Rabbits are not rodents. Well, how about that? Um, however, so but will they know that? <laughs> I mean, right? Like, just I'm gonna say no. I'm but, gonna okay. Yeah. So the I, I I mean, obviously, all the mammals are related in some way or another. But I could have sworn that rabbits were in the same. Huh. I I thought they were c- more closely related to rodents than I, apparently they are. The old lagomorphs. Oh well. It's good. Um, oh, and also That's for right. anybody who wants to be able to vote, make sure you, you head over to our Patreon and support the Langtime Studio Patreon. Yes. And then you too can vote and help us make these decisions and ruin uh, David's counting <laughs> nightmares. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By the way, for the person that was asking about uh, Dothraki, um, it's not actually my. I mean, they're exactly the same. May is the third person singular pro- pronoun in Dothraki, so it's it's oh. more it's more excluding. Wow, wow, and <laughs> totally by accident, especially since these words came from other people and other people suggested that became the pronoun. That makes it even better. Yeah, um, so much better. So yeah, Pablo, you're gonna need to tone it down a little bit, but. Um, so, uh, but yeah, that's a good point for uh, Johan. Um, did we not change that? I forget. Uh, the uh, cabbage needs its plural changed. Apparently, rabbits can't eat cabbage. Oh my goodness! All the things we're trying to accidentally kill our rabbits with. Oh, it's too bad because that was a really cool plural. It gave us our MH. That's all right. So it would be Tovika. Oh, I'm in the wrong part of the dictionary. It's like, I don't even see our word for cabbage. Uh, um, oh, apparently I can't raise my knees or the keyboard doesn't. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So there, that's that's fixed. So now uh, cabbage is inedible again. Um, okay. Cool. All right. Um, okay, so we're gonna do that, and then um, is there anything else? I think that's it. One quick question: Did yes. Impika mean anything special other than being an e- kind of? Because in the English part of the glossary, we say see entry Impika. Oh, uh, it was a head of cabbage. Okay, so I, that needs to change. Okay, you've got that. You're already yeah, there, so it. I'm gonna let you do it. Yeah, you're good. All good. And then I think that was. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, but it is going to be taken out of... Oh, man, that's why. We wanted it as an example of... (sighs) Okay, so we're going to have to come up with another word. Uh, I'm going to put that one... Okay. Um, I guess we don't need to put it there. We could. There's no reason we couldn't. Uh, So we'll put it there as another example of voicing. And then, um, no, not that. Oh, um, there. Well, all right, whatever. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Okay. We'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll we come up with another, another word. Yes. Yeah, we need a new edible word for something that starts with F. Um, and apparently, do research on what rabbits can eat before we make it edible. Mm hmm. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. Excellent. I think we're good. Cool. All right. 
So, uh, yes. All right. So then we have our, our, our um, thing for, for next week. And then tomorrow is, because today's the 30th, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot. Tomorrow. Stare off into space. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow is the, tomorrow's the big day. That's the, the first. So uh, since uh, the, with Patreon, we don't charge people up front. We charge people the first of the month. Uh, tomorrow is when a whole bunch of new stuff is going to happen. So, mm -hmm. uh, for patrons, good time to join up because then you immediately get a bunch of stuff. Um, and, um, and also tomorrow is going to be episode three of our podcast where we just spent the entire time talking about language and that's it. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. That was a fun one. By the way, have you gone through the list yet? The full list? Have you gone through the full list? No. Okay. I'm That's still fine. making my way through. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and my battery's getting low, and my computer's going to shut down if I don't okay. get over to an outlet. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, everyone, stay grammar. All Can't right. Can't wait to see you next week. All right. Bye bye.